Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with lecture two. This lecture is going to be on designing a realistic journal cover. And during this lecture, we're going to be creating two different journal covers. The first one is the one that you see here on the left. You'll recognize it as the scene from our previous lecture. We're going to take that exact scene and see if we can fit it on a journal cover. And then for the second half of the class, we're going to try to create this journal cover you see here on the right, this more realistic cover. And during the course of this lecture, we're going to learn a few new tricks that will allow us to get this final journal cover. And some of the things that we'll learn are, first of all, we'll learn how to import a journal cover directly into our scene, which will allow us to compose the um, render as if this logo was here. Then after that, we'll learn how to work with HDRIs to add realistic lighting to our scene. And then after that, we will use PBR materials, which are physically based rendering materials, which is what you see here on the ground of this render. And then we will add a procedural material to the protein structure. And the benefit of using a procedural material is it allows you to add realistic and complex materials to a geometry that's too complex to add a PBR material. And then lastly, just as an opportunity to practice more with the compositor, we're going to be using, um, we're going to be adding dust and some smudge effects to the camera, and we'll, we'll do that in the compositor. Okay, so let's jump right into Blender and start off with the first section. The first section is how to view your molecular scene through the lens of a journal cover. So the way that you do this is you just click on your 3D window and then you press Shift A. This will allow you to add an object. What we want to add is we want to go down to Image and we want to add a reference image. You can select on Reference and this will take you to um, allow you to browse your files and you'll see that under the lecture notes, so um, under the lecture files, you'll have a directory called Cover Templates. And I've created a few different templates for different journals. You'll see here I have ACS Catalysis, which is a journal I like. There's a black version and a white version. Also, if you're a fan of the cell family of journals, I also have Cancer Cell in its classic blue and also its white. For the purpose of this lecture, I'm going to go with the ACS Catalysis journal cover. So I'm going to select ACS Catalysis white and then load reference image. Now you'll see that loads the cover image directly into our scene. And if we were to uh, zoom out a little bit, you can see that it dropped it directly in the center. However, this would work better if we could place the image directly in front of our camera, as if it was a cover filter for our scene. So what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to go to my navigation gizmo over here. I'm, I'm going to select the Z orthographic view. This will allow us to see it from the top. So now we can grab our um, journal cover reference image. If it's not already selected, go ahead and select the move option. Then drag your journal cover to the center of your camera. Now, it won't be optimized for the side, so we can move to the side view, grab the journal cover, and move it such that it's on the camera again. Now, we can go ahead and go into the camera view now, and you'll see that the, the reference image is much, much bigger than our camera. So we can address this by going to the scale manipulator, grabbing the white circle that surrounds the handlebars, and decreasing it. Now we can go ahead and go back to the move and we can move it back onto our camera and go into our, our camera view to finalize the moving. So I'm going to need one more scale with another move. Okay, so even though our 
journal template is now fit to our camera view, you'll see that the camera view dimensions are much more, much differenter than uh, the journal cover that we're working with. So you can fix that by going to the output properties tab, which is over here. It's a picture of a printer. You can select that and then we can change the X and Y resolution of our camera. So normally if I was rendering this cover out for a journal, I would pick either 4K or 6K. 4K would be 3840 pixels. In this case, I'm going to go with 1920 just so things will render a little bit faster. In that case, that would mean that our X resolution needs to be 1572 pixels. So now we can adjust our cover template such that it fits in the space and we can drag it down. And what you'll notice is that at the bottom, part of this hangs off the cover and that's what you would expect because the reference image usually just goes on part of the journal cover. So this is all we're interested in right here. If we zoom out, you can see that our cover image is now directly inside of our camera. But if you were to take your camera, select your move tool and try to move it around, you would see that our reference image gets left behind. So we want to group these together and you can do this with something called parenting. So to do this, you would select your reference image, hold down shift and select your camera. Now, once you've done that, we can parent it with a shortcut, which is control P and that will have your object show up and select object and now it's parented. So now if we go and select the camera view and move it around, you'll see that the uh, camera and the reference image move together. So now if we jump back into the camera view by selecting the camera toggle button, we can see that it's the positioning of our protein and the peptide aren't quite in the center of the journal. So what we can do is we can go over here to this little arrow button and select it. This will give us some additional properties. So if you go to view while selected on the camera, you'll see this very useful option that I haven't introduced you to yet, which says camera to view. We can select the camera to view and then that will allow you to move your camera rather than having to move the objects around. So what I'm going to do is I'm holding down shift and my middle button on my mouse and I'm positioning the protein into the center of the journal. And then when you're done with that, don't forget to unselect camera to view or every time you move around in the screen space, your camera will move as well. So go ahead now and let's reposition the peptides. So I'm going to start by repositioning the peptide that's in the front. So click on it, right click, select objects, make sure you're still on move and let's drag it such that it's filling up this empty space and maybe a little bit close to the title to have the objects interacting with the rest of the, the cover composition. Now let's handle the peptide in the back, select peptide back, right click, select objects. Now let's drag it and move it down and go to rotate. And I'm just going to rotate this to fill this empty space a little bit better. Now if you go up here to this button right here, this is our rendered view button. Click on that. We can see what the cover will look like. Now I really like how this is looking. One thing that I don't like is that peptide, this peptide that's in the back is too far away and we can't see any of the atoms or any of the details. So you can fix that by zooming out a little bit, go to a side view and select your peptide back, click, right click, select objects. Now I'm going to go to my move tool and just drag it just a little bit closer. Go back to my camera view and I'm going to drag the peptide to fill that empty space again and unclick. And I like this a lot better. We can, we can see the atoms and it's a little bit more interesting 
of a composition. Okay, so now if you wanted to render this out, we could go render, render image. Now, for reference, for later in the lecture, I want you to pay attention to how long this takes. So this has just the default materials that you'll find in Blender, and you'll see that this only takes, this takes less, less than 10 seconds, which is very fast, and then the compositor is going to be applied next. And um, as we add more and more details to the scene, the render time's going to increase. But that ends the first section of this lecture, viewing your molecular scene through the lens of a journal cover.